everyone welcome back to Money Monday. Now before I begin this financial video I just wanted to introduce everybody to my newly upholstered dark grey sofa. So it would have been maybe a month or two ago I put the um, cushion covers in the washing machine because they were looking a bit dirty and I must have accidentally hit a warm cycle so the cushion covers completely shrunk and I couldn't get them back on the sofa again. So that meant I had to get the whole entire sofa reupholstered, which if you ever had to get furniture reupholstered, it can be quite an expensive exercise. Almost cheaper to buy a new sofa, in fact. Anyway, I would like to say a show appreciation <laughs> towards my life account because when this happened, I didn't have a meltdown or get angry or freak out. I just went, okay, fine. That's why I have a life account for these random things that just happen in life. And I was able to take the money out of that account and pay for it to be fixed. Uh, and um, I didn't let it impact me. I didn't let it to give me a bad mood or pull down my energy levels. I just accepted it, paid for, the, for it to be reupholstered and moved on with my life. And as you can see, it's obviously a lot darker than the original white um, that I had. And I decided to do that because it just wasn't practical. Um, with Rocco and um, his grubby little fingers, um, having two dogs, um, which I love to have on the sofa to have cuddles with, and um, Rocco and I sometimes eat on the sofa. And actually my, probably the worst offender was actually me and my love affair with fake tan, because that would often rub off on the sofa. So. I'm loving the new color um, and I'm really happy with about it but I just wanted to sh like let you know an example of when my life account has really helped me. So if you don't have a life account definitely uh, make sure you start building up a set amount of savings that you've got to set aside so if anything random happens like shrinking your cushion covers it doesn't it doesn't cause a disaster in your world. Okay so moving on to Money Monday. This video is called How to Get Past Poverty. And when I say past poverty, I'm talking from a mental perspective. If you are really determined and motivated to create a better financial future for yourself, you've got to have a very healthy headspace and attitude towards embracing the journey towards financial freedom. It doesn't matter if you were born into poverty, grew up constantly surrounded by poverty and, and witnessed people with negative financial habits. Your past is your past, it is beyond your control and it is really quite irrelevant. What only matters is where you are going now. What steps are you going to take today to create a better and more financially prosperous future? By no means am I saying you have to sweep under the mat any toxic or negative experiences you've had around money or things that you may even witness people do around money. There are actually some very valuable and powerful lessons you can learn from analyzing those situations in your history. But staying loyal to that past poverty is only going to hold you back in life and it's actually going to make things so much harder to achieve. So you have to accept that you are worthy of a great abundance and it is definitely available to you. So this video, I'm going to help you create that shift in your headspace towards having a more powerful and productive headspace around money. As you guys know, I'm a huge fan of Oprah and I feel like watching her programs has opened my mind and my heart and my um, spirit and soul so much and she I was watching a program once and she talked about money and she said money is the whole idea of having wealth is not letting that wealth use you but you using the wealth to create good things in life and I think this is a really interesting and powerful perspective from Oprah around money because there are a lot of people out there and at times you know including myself that actually have a little bit of subconscious fear around money and that the fear of what potentially could happen with becoming wealthy. The reality is, is money doesn't change you unless you define yourself on money. So the first thing that I recommend you do in creating or starting to create that shift in your headspace around money is to actually spend some time analyzing and maybe even journaling your experience with money. Think about what your parents did around money, you know, any sort of family and friends, even maybe your friends' parents or your parents' friends. Look at the way people have used money in their world and their lives to create good things and bad things and what take from those list of those thoughts and those feelings, take away the focus on the ones that are positive. 
It's really interesting in my business. Um, you know, I coach people around money and I, um, I you know, advise them around what to do with their money. And often I, when I sit down with a new client and I'll talk to them about their relationship with money and their history with money. And I will have someone that has a very sort of, I guess, um, unhealthy financial situation. And in asking lots of questions, I discover that they've actually picked up the same financial habits as their parents. You know, they, they um, you know, live from paycheck to paycheck. They've lived beyond their means. They've maybe caught a bit caught up in the keeping up with the Jones mentality. And they have consciously and subconsciously recreated the same situation in their own world. And I, obviously I try and help them break that. But then, I also come across people who have really great financial situations that I, and, and um, they want to continue on building and, um, and manifesting more wealth. And again, when I ask them the same questions, sometimes they've actually had the same type of parents where they've you know, been living you know, beyond their means and are running a, in living from paycheck to paycheck and I guess on the merry-go-round or, or rat race constantly chasing their tail. But the difference with these people is they've actually stopped and acknowledged what negative habits existed and decided they want and consciously decided that they wanted to make a better future for themselves. And they've actually used that as their motivation and um, I guess desire and, and, and a source of energy to help create a better financial future. So therefore they've looked at it and thought, I don't want that situation. I don't like that stress. I don't like the, the toxicity. Um, of um, what it's done to my, you know, the relationships or their health, and they have gone and been sensible with money, and they they pay off their credit cards in full each month. They set aside some savings money in their life account. They um, invest. Um, they contribute to their savings, their retirement savings plan. They are, you know, they ha and they have a feeling of, I guess, empowerment control, motivation and peace around money because they've used those negative experiences to help create and protect them and guide them to making much more positive and wise and sensible ones. So the second thing you need to do is obviously build your financial knowledge and education. And obviously Money Monday um, videos will help you do this, um, but I do recommend, you know, uh, doing courses, um, you know, reading um, lots of books, and I've mentioned in one of my past videos my number one recommended reading material is um, Motivated Money by Peter Thornhill. Yes, it is an Australian book, but it is applicable to everyone around the world. Uh, I will be doing also book reviews in future videos, but I just want to focus on this subject right now. Um, so building your knowledge that you can actually start making educated decisions around the way you use money and the way you um, will create more money in your in your future. My third tip for breaking um, of getting out of poverty is action. Don't talk about it, just do it. Get out there and start making the changes that you've said that you want to create. Actions speak way louder than words. So if you've set a goal, for example, to pay off your credit card, start doing that. Even if you can only afford to put $1 towards that card, that is a powerful action and you are sending a powerful shift out into the universe saying that I am serious about getting out of debt. My fourth tip for breaking past poverty um, is recognition. Make sure you stop and take the time to see far, how far you have really come. At times when you're working towards great financial goals, it will feel like you're taking two steps forward or one step back or just simply feel like it's painfully slow. You need to actually take a moment to yourself and look at how far you have come and realize that you are progressing in the right way. So track your financial goals, document how much debt you've got or how much you've got in savings and see how, you know, how those numbers are changing over time so that you feel reassured, which will then help you build motivation and continue on with your concentration and determination. This will also help create a sense of appreciation. And we all know that when we show gratification and appreciation, we tend to get more of it. My fifth and final tip for breaking past poverty is never give up. No one remembers the people that, you know, threw the towel in, quit, or just simply gave up because it was too hard. They remember the people that persevered, no matter how hard it was, showed passion and determination because that helps inspire other people. So I dare you to inspire other people through your dreams, actions, and passion. So that's it for Money Monday. I hope this video helped. Please make sure you subscribe. You can also like us on Facebook and follow me on Instagram. And as always, I love hearing back from you. Let me know what you think of this video, um, what sort of discoveries you might come across um, after watching this, and I will see you later on the week for Lifestyle Love. Okay, ciao! <laughs>